Hi, my name is Jem Uxell, and this video series is about how you can get into your slides. In this video, I'm going to talk about the camera input. Now, the camera input is one of the more important components of our system over here. So let's talk about it in more detail. Now, if you can generate an image like this from your camera, that would be golden. But maybe your background is not large enough. Maybe there's some other stuff uh, that you kind of need to get rid of. So you may need to crop that whatever camera, camera image you're getting. You may need to crop that. And that's okay. You can do so inside OBS and that would be just fine. But it will just limit how far you can reach in your slides. But if you can if you can generate an image that sort of covers your entire slide background, that gives you the flexibility to reach out and <laughs> point to whatever you want in your slides. Right. So let's talk about the components of this image. Obviously, there's going to be you, right? And there's some background behind you. And there's going to be a camera. And there's going to be some lighting for you. And also, very, very importantly, there's going to be some lighting for the background. Now, let's start with the background first. Ideally, we would like to have some white background here. But even if you have a perfectly white background, if you don't have proper background lighting, it's not going to appear perfectly white for your camera, right? So the background lighting is the key to make this white. And if you do have proper lighting, then it really doesn't matter what you have in your background. For example, you could have a, just, just a piece of cloth, uh, like a, some bed sheets hanging off of the ceiling, and that would be totally okay. Uh, it really doesn't matter what it is because it's going to completely disappear into this, this whiteness behind me, right? So it really doesn't matter what it is. Uh, as long as it's white, it's fine. And even if it's not perfectly white, um, it's okay if you have proper lighting here, it's going to be overexposed and it's going to appear white to your camera and that would be okay. So the background lighting here is the important component. So let's talk about that. Now, for my background lighting here, I built a, a light fixture, a custom light fixture like this. So it has some LED strips here and it's focusing the light to the background. And it's important, most importantly, it's not eliminating me directly. It's just eliminating my background. And it looks like something like this. So this is the, the light fixture. And inside here, there is a, a LED strip, a pretty strong LED strip uh, for this background lighting. But you don't have to have, you don't have to build a custom light fixture. You can just use whatever you have and it will be okay. Uh, as long as you have something that where you can use to direct the, the lights to the background only. So you don't want to use some light fixture that looks like this, where light goes in all directions, because the background lighting should eliminate only your background. That's the important piece here. Um, now, as for the foreground lighting, there's a lot that can be said about the foreground lighting, which I am not going to get into. And this is really beyond the context of, of this video, so I'm not going to get into the details of that. But I'm just going to say um, one thing. You probably don't want to have one strong light source, a small strong light source that is shining really strong uh, light in front of you, uh, on you, uh, with some strong shadows forming on your face that's not going to be very flattering. You would probably like to have uh, some, some diffused lighting uh, where you, you're not going to have strong shadows on your face and you won't look that scary, right? But um, for, the, for the purposes of just getting into your slides, um, any kind of lighting where you're not going to appear completely dark or maybe too bright uh, is, is, going to be, is going to be good enough. Of course, you can improve your lighting setup by doing proper lighting, but I'm not going to get into that in, in this video anyway. Um, let's talk about the last component, that is the, the camera. Uh, for the camera, we have a range of options. I would say that we have a range of options starting from a proper DLSLR video camera to your, uh, your laptop camera, maybe. <laughs> right, uh, right over here. <laughs> now, obviously, a DLSLR camera would be preferable. Um, actually, this is the, the camera that I'm using for recording this video. Uh, and I like it a lot. This is not the most expensive DLSLR camera out in the market. Um, it's not the cheapest one, but it's, a, it's, a, it's one with a fairly decent uh, sensor. It works out uh, pretty well. I would recommend it. But you could use a way more expensive DSL DSLR camera if you want to. Or um, you can try out with a cheaper camera as well. That would be fine. The more important component here, I think, is to make sure that this camera is plugged to the wall. So you have... Uh, actual wall power um, powering your camera because 
your if you don't have this, your camera may run out of battery in in the middle of your talk uh, or, or lecture, and that's not going to be good, right? So you would like this camera to survive your entire lecture, and for that, you don't want to rely on the camera battery, right? But if you do have a, a DLSLR camera, one nice thing that comes out of it is that you have manual control. You can manually con manually control the exposure, that's the ISO um, aperture and shutter speed or you can manually control the zoom or manually control the focus. And that would be great because you can set it up and, and you can get, set it up such that you get the, this, this entire frame that you want. Uh, your focus is in the, the, in the right range. Um, your exposure is such that your background appears perfectly white and you don't appear too dark or too bright. Uh, so you can set it up and, and prepare it and, and then it's going to sit there and be ready for you whenever you're, you're ready to uh, record a video or stream a video. Uh, and so that, that's going to be uh, very advantageous. That's why I, I would recommend it. Um, as in terms of getting, getting image out of your camera, uh, you can use the HDMI output of your camera if your camera supports it. And I would really recommend that you use a camera that has an HDMI output. Uh, and you can capture it, capture that HDMI output using a capture card. Now, there are so many capture car cards out there, and probably most of them would work for our purposes. I would recommend, though, uh, getting a capture card that supports an output resolution of 1080p or higher. Uh, so you can get um, you know, good enough video resolution out of your capture card. Uh, you can also get image from your uh, camera using its USB output. Some cameras do support that. Um, and and you know, this camera also supports that. But um, in my experience, I don't get the, the full quality video uh, from my camera uh, using the USB output. The resolution becomes, um, it's, it, you don't get the full resolution from your camera, uh, at least in, uh, in the, the cameras that I've tried, I, I didn't. So this is not what I would recommend, but it works. It works just fine, so you, you can use it. Um, I have a setup that uses that, and it works fine uh, if you want to use that as well. That's definitely one of the viable options. You can use it with all sorts of different cameras. Uh, I tried it with this camera as well, um, and that works fine. But if your camera supports HDMI output, uh, getting the uh, image using HDMI output and with a capture card would be ideal. You could also use a webcam. Uh, if you have a decent webcam, you can get a decent image. I actually tried this very webcam, and it works just fine. Um, you know, it doesn't have the same video quality, but it's 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 um, good enough, I think. You can also try what your um, built-in uh, camera of your, for example, laptop uh, provides, um, and that could be good enough. Um, I, you know, depending on what kind of laptop you have, this might really give you. A decent enough uh, image quality for you to appear inside of your slides. That that could be, that could be well enough. I, I would say just give it a try, and if you uh, want to upgrade later on, um, of course, this is what I would recommend: using a proper DLSLR camera with HDMI output, with a proper HDMI cable, into a capture card, so you can get um, high quality video uh, for for your slides. So this is uh, the the summary of my camera input. But in this setup here, actually, what I have behind me is a whiteboard on a wall. Uh, so the advantage here, if you have a setup like this, is that if I just turn off the, the lights that are illuminating the background, then you can see the whiteboard. It's not overexposed anymore. And I can just use that whiteboard to, to make my points, right? Um, now, you can have a separate lighting setup for for illuminating your whiteboard when you're using it this way. Um, or you can just turn off the, uh, the background light and, and hope that they're providing good enough illumination when you turn them off for your, using your whiteboard. Uh, that's what I'm doing uh, in my setup here. And when I turn on the back, background lighting uh, on, then the, the whiteboard is completely overexposed and it sort of disappears. So, but if you're not going to use a whiteboard, then you don't need to have a whiteboard anything really works. It doesn't really matter what you put in your background, uh, as I said earlier. So this is what I plan to say about the camera input. I hope you found this video helpful and it helps you get into your slides.